Today we're going to take a look at how you can stylize your images when you edit them. We're going to be using Lightroom Classic, as we tend to do in Tutorial Tuesday, but this will work in pretty much any editing software that you might want to use. We're going to be looking at exposure, kind of shaping that light, using masks, and color grading, using a few different tools to get the job done. Let's jump into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, and every Tuesday, we bring a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Let's jump into Lightroom Classic, where we're going to be working with this image. And I actually really like the image. I like the, the feel of it. I like the, the kind of the location. I like the kind of mood of it. The light is actually really nice. We've got some interesting light in different places. But I think there's a lot we can do to it to make it a lot better. And that's exactly what we're going to hope to do. And also, you know, we're going to try and stylize this with some coloring and, and some interesting things. Let's start by doing some basic adjustments, some kind of global adjustments, right? So this is where we affect the entire image with these sliders on the right. Now, something that's interesting about this image in particular is we're actually working with a JPEG image because I actually don't have raw images from this shoot, which is interesting. But actually, this is going to be a great demonstration of there is actually still a lot you can do with JPEG images. Sometimes we think of JPEG images as, as they're just going to fall apart too quickly, but there's still quite quite a bit of room to edit these, especially playing around with colors and stuff like that before things get out of hand. So let's start. Now, we don't need to do as much work to do things with contrast and stuff like that because the JPEG has that a bit more kind of baked in. I actually think it looks really nice. The first thing I'm going to do is actually come down to the transform tab. I'm going to go ahead and click auto on this to actually get Lyrum to kind of, kind of align this correctly. I think that looks instantly a lot better. And I might come in and just crop this a tiny bit as well. Something like that. I don't think we need as much space kind of around. Something, something like that. I think that probably looks quite good. We might even undo that. I don't know. It's not that drastic what we've done there. Next thing I'm going to do is actually bring the highlights up a little bit, the shadows down, a little bit of clarity in the image, a bit of texture as well. And I'm actually going to bring the saturation down just a touch. We might come back and, and re kind of jig that around a little bit. But for now, we're going to bring that down just a touch. And I think for now, that might be where I leave it. And the reason is I want to get in and start doing some masking. So we're going to come and do the masking panel up here. We're going to be altering the exposure, shaping that light a bit first. Then we'll start playing around with the colors afterwards. So here, I'm actually going to go in straight away with a linear gradient and just bring this up from the bottom and darken this part of the image, just bring that exposure down. That just allows the brighter areas to be up here, which I think is exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and actually add to this mask another linear gradient. I'm going to bring this in from this side. What I really want to encompass is this part of the wall here. There we go. Okay, I think that I think that that works really well. We're actually going to go ahead and add one more linear gradient here as well. Something something like that. So we're just shaping that light kind of around our subjects in the middle. Let's do another mask here. We're going to go ahead and do a radial gradient. And what I want to encompass is the actual light that seems to be spilling in from the top. So something like this. Let's do something like that. Let's bring the exposure up on that. Let's come down and actually bring the dehaze down a little bit as well. Maybe that's a little bit too much. And then we're going to actually warm this up a touch as well. And I think that I think that actually looks really quite nice. We've done quite a lot instantly to shape the light here. I'm going to go back into this mask one where we've darkened areas. I'm actually going to cool this a little bit as well. Add some blue tones to those shadows. Now, immediately, if I turn off all these masks, which I can do by just clicking and holding on this eye icon here, you can see just how much this is affecting the image. And essentially all we're doing is a bit of dodging and burning. We're just shaping that light using some shadow, and some brightening in certain areas, just adjusting those exposure values and a little bit of white balance as well. But it's making quite a big difference to the image. Let's go ahead and create another mask, a radial gradient this time. We're gonna do a reasonably large one just over our subjects here. I'm gonna invert this and actually just bring that exposure down. That's gonna create a little bit of a vignette feel and enhance those darker areas around our subjects, which I really like as well. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually come over to the left and I'm going to use an adaptive preset, this time adaptive subject. I'm going to mouse over pop. I'm going to click on that. That is actually going to create a new mask, which identifies our subjects here. It's done a really good job of it. In fact, if I press O with that mask selected, you can see it's selected them there. 
and it's just brightened it with some exposure. I'm going to bring the amount of this preset down a little bit so it just blends a little bit nicely into the overall kind of photo. But that is actually, I think, looking really, really nice. We don't really have to do any work with our subjects here. They look great. Everything is nice. I think the JPEG actually looks lovely, which is really, really nice. I love the contrast in the image overall as well, which is which is fantastic, to be honest. The next thing we're going to start doing, I think, is start working a little bit on the colors. So let's come back over to the general editing tab. I'm going to come down here to the color mixer. So we're going to look at the hue, saturation, and luminance tab, first of all. Over in the hue, I'm going to bring the orange down a little bit. The yellows maybe down a little bit as well. And then the blues, I just want to push towards the aqua a touch. Not too much, but something like that. I'm going to come over to saturation. I'm going to take some of the yellow out of the image because I think some of these areas just around on the floor, or we'll take some green out as well. Just benefit from that, I think. I think that looks a little bit better like that. So we're going to do that. I'm going to push the blue up a little bit. I want to, I want to really lean into those blue tones in the image. So we're going to do something like that. I'm going to come down to the color grading panel as well, which is where we can add colors to the shadows, the midtones, the highlights separately, which is actually really good. So let's go ahead and add some orange into the midtones. Nothing too crazy. Something like that. We're going to add some blue into the shadows. Something like, something like that. I think that looks pretty good. And a little bit of orange into the highlights as well. Now I, I tend to stay away a little bit from this, but for this image we are going for a more stylized look. So if we actually turn this off and back on, you can see it's incredibly subtle. You might not even be able to notice it on YouTube. But we could actually accentuate a little bit with the shadow there, something like that, and actually move that into more of a... Bl that looks really nice. Okay, that looks really good. Let's turn that off and back on. That's making more of a difference now. I quite like that. Maybe we'll just add that a little bit more into the, into the mid-tones as well. Okay, I really like that. Okay, it's a little bit more of a, a subjective side to things, right? Because it's color grading. There is, in some ways, no right or wrong. You know, once we've got things kind of technically correct... Color grading is just a matter of personal preference, but I'm, I'm liking the way this is looking so far. Let's come back up. What I want to do now is play around a little bit with the tone curve. Now I'm going to go over to the blue channel, which we can actually edit separately from the green, the red, or the white channel. And I'm going to place a point in the shadows down here. What I want to do, and a point actually in the highlights up here, what I want to do is just bring the shadow point up into the blue a little bit, something like that. And then we're going to balance that out by bringing this point up in the highlights down into the sort of yellows. Now, this is very easy to go too far with, as you can probably see already. So I want to be incredibly subtle with it. Something like that, maybe. If I turn that off and back on, yeah, we're making quite a significant difference to the image there. What I could do as well is come down to the color grade and turn that off and back on. No, I think that looks quite good. I just want to maybe take out some of the orange in the midtones some of the orange in the uh, in the highlights as well. We don't want to go too crazy with that. And then what I'm going to do is actually come up to the white channel on the tone curve. I'm going to place a point in the shadows. And I'm going to place another point about here, sort of roughly in the midtones. That shadow point I want to bring down a little bit, adding a little bit of contrast. But I also want to bring the black point up just a touch. Something a little bit like that. Let's get back over to the blue channel where I think there's just a little bit too much blue maybe add it into those shadows. We want to keep it a little bit natural. And then I might just come back over to this white point. I, I think I want to I want to bring this down a little bit. I don't want to fade those, the sort of black point too much. Something a little bit more like that. Let's come back up to the top. I might just bring the overall contrast down just a touch. I think it might be too much there. And I'm just going to come back down to the color grading. I'm just going to take some of the blue out of the shadows. I don't want that much in there. Okay, I think that looks a bit more natural now, which I quite like because it was starting to get a little bit much, perhaps. Let's actually come down to the saturation tab here where we can affect the different colors. I'm just going to bring some of the orange out of the image as well. Something like that. Okay, that looks really good. That's that's quite nice, actually. Let's look at a before and after of the image. So this is where we started. This is where we've taken it to. Quite a significant difference, actually, both in terms of the perspective, but the colors, the exposure, where we've kind of pointed the viewer's eye, which is way more towards our subject as opposed to a slightly... I mean, the light was nice, but a slightly more... I mean, this is way more dynamic in terms of the lighting, right? Way more dynamic, absolutely. Let's just bring in one more mask. I'm going to do something like this, a linear gradient coming in from the top right, 
something like that. Let's feather it out a little bit. I just want to bring that that exposure up. Something like that. Let's bring the dehaze down a little bit. Something like that. And then back over to the main editing panel. Let's bring the overall exposure down. There we go. Now we feel like we have light just pouring down onto our subjects, but otherwise it's a reasonably dark, moody alleyway. I think that actually looks really nice. So that's before, that's after. We've done quite a lot there to change the look of this image. This can work really well for all kinds of things, right? But, you know, especially when you've got a slightly moodier environment or an interesting environment like this, silence your image with some color grading, some exposure kind of manipulating, you know, dodging and burning can do wonders for, I think, the final image, the final look of things. Now, maybe we've darkened this a little bit too much. Maybe the bottom part of this image is darkened a little bit too much, and I could do more to brighten that up. Perhaps, for example, I could even turn off, maybe this mask doesn't need to be on. Maybe you prefer that. Maybe that looks a bit more, a bit more natural. Maybe we could, we could bring up the overexposure of this bottom part just to even that out a little bit. But I do quite like it leaning in to the more, the, the moodier look. I'd love to know what you think though. Would you have done something slightly differently? You know, this is a very subjective, personal preference kind of thing that we're looking at here, right? This is very, you know, everything's going to be unique to, to your photo as well. What works in this photo is not necessarily going to work exactly the same in another photo, but it's a very, it's a fun experience. It's a fun one to play around with to get a more stylized image. I'd love to know where you would have stopped, what you would have done differently, or maybe you would have done it exactly the same. I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. I think that's super interesting. You can check out a full list of all the kit we use for this video, for this photo as well. This is taken on the Nikon Z8 by checking out the links down in the description. You'll be able to find all of those over at parkcameras.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe as well. There's new content all the time. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.